Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again, coming to you from the virtual set. Hope you're okay with that. We're going to talk about a very interesting passage in scripture. One that makes many people think, and myself included, I'd like that to be very cool. To, that maybe one day, you know, God's going to give us superpowers. Yeah, that's right. That's what it sounds like, at least. But maybe there's a deeper meaning to this passage in the book of Mark, chapter 16. <laughs> are the signs that will follow those that know the truth, that know Christ. They'll be able to pick up serpents, right? They'll be able to drink any deadly thing and it won't hurt them. They'll be able to cast out demons, to lay hands on people that were sick. This is pretty powerful stuff. And I believe it's 100% true. And I believe that it's 100% the day that we're in and the day that we're coming to. But it's not what you think. So I hope you're buckled up. Welcome back to the program. So, after Christ is risen from the grave, he appears first. You know, I have a couple of videos on this if you want. I have like a biblical playlist. And of course, you can go to my website to learn more, jacobisrael.com. Hundreds of essays that reveal what, what I believe God inspires and uh, reveals because no scripture is of private interpretation, meaning that I can't just, you know, understand all these things on my own, no matter how hard I try, it has to be revealed. So after Christ is risen from the grave, he, he appears to uh, a couple of people. Mary, and then of course, you know, his closest disciples, and he appears to a couple on the way to Emmaus. But when he appears, it's pretty interesting. Nobody recognizes him. Mary thought that it was like a gardener. Other people thought it was an angel. The two on the way to Emmaus, I have a video on this, they didn't even know he was until after he ate. It's very symbolic. That means that when Christ comes again, you may not recognize it. That's something to pay attention to. And this is what happened in Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath passed, Mary, they went to the tomb and they saw that the stone was rolled away. A stone is very symbolic. In scripture, you see stones that cover the well, Jacob's well, other wells. There was a stone that was covered and often that stone needed to be rolled away so that people could be fed, so that the sheep could get the water. You get what I'm saying? And the water is the word of God. So the stone to the tomb has to be rolled away. What's that stone? Well, it's the same stone that keeps us from seeing the truth. You know, the law was written on tablets of stone, just saying. But now God writes his law on our hearts. Mark chapter 16, verse 11. And when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, they didn't believe. And after that, he appeared. Listen to that. That word appeared it, uh, in the Greek, phanero. It actually means to make manifest or to make known. It's kind of like now you understand. Uh, some people are getting this. And after that, he appeared in another form. You see, all of a sudden you have different forms. See, Christ comes many different ways. And it's hard to recognize when that happens. So strange, right? Why would you think that people wouldn't recognize their Savior, the one that they serve, the one that they, they, they devoted their life to? Sometimes it's hard to recognize the things of God. So God has to reveal it to you. And they went and then they, uh, they told it to the residue, the, uh, the remnant. The truth started to be shared with the residue. 
it's like, you know, if today was the day, it would be probably shared to videos like YouTube. That's what would happen. Christ would be appearing to people who then come on and say, hey, guess what? The day of the Lord's here. You should be excited. We try to share it with the residue, if you will. Hope the residue is listening. After that, he appeared onto the eleven as they sat at meat. Notice the word meat, it's deep understanding in scripture, by the way. No longer just the sincere milk, which is kind of the rudimentary understanding of faith, but now you get the meat. So as you sit at meat, as you sit and you try to understand the deeper things of God, Christ appears. Spiritually speaking, it probably literally happened too. I'm not saying it didn't. For those people in the comment section that are going to be like, I can't believe you would make something spiritual that is uh, much meant to be taken historically. And only historically. And nothing else. Spirit of the Lord gives life. The letter has to kill. You know, it's kind of like the spear of the story. But let's take this a bit further because in a second we're going to learn that if you're a true follower, that you can be bit by rattlers <laughs> and drink like arsenic. That's what people want you to think. But that may not be the truth. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided with them for their unbelief, their hardness of heart. They're like, no, we didn't think it was going to be like this at all. We didn't think that you were going to appear to us like this within us. Even though the scripture steer clearly states that Christ in you is the hope of glory, we didn't expect it to be that way. We expected it to be another way. And uh, Christ worked on their hearts and upbraided them as they sat at meat, as they tried to understand the deeper things. He kind of said, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. Kingdom of God, you can't see it doesn't come with observation. You can't say, look here or look there, for behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So he upbraided them. He said, you know, you didn't believe. How could you believe? Because they didn't believe after he was risen. Interesting. And so he says to them, go you into the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is good news, by the way. You can't fail. God's in charge. God's in charge. And he finishes creation and victory. He says, go and preach the gospel. Go you preach the gospel to every single creature. And he says, and these signs shall follow them. They shall cast out demons. Ooh. They shall be able to take up serpents. And it won't hurt them. They'll be able to drink any deadly thing and it won't bother them all. They'll be able to lay hands on the sick. These are some pretty cool, powerful things. These are the signs that are supposed to follow believers, people that seek the truth, people that have given their life to Christ. So is that happening today? Ooh, you're going to find out. does one cast out a devil? Well, Jesus, he had no problem when he saw the man that was demon possessed, le legion, right? We are many. Cast it out, real simple. Now, now what, is, what sets us free in scripture? Use your head for a second. The truth shall set you free. What does the truth set us free from? Lies. Lies. The lies we believe. The devil, Satan, is the father of all lies. If Satan has no truth in him, never has, the scripture says, Satan never knew the truth, always was a liar from the beginning, a murderer from the beginning. And the devils that come from the father of all lies would also be called lies. So when you're devil-possessed, demon-possessed, it is a spirit. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being reductive by calling it a lie, but that's what it is. It is the opposite of truth. It is the opposite of God. But when you have the truth, you can then cast out the lie. You see, it's not about just like the exorcist and pea soup. It's a little bit more like coming to somebody who's possessed by a lie and gloriously setting that person free by saying, guess what? You're not a drug addict. You're not miserable. You're not not going anywhere. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. You have a life that is waiting in Christ. And all you got to do, you know, all you got to do is ask for it, to seek it. 
the truth sets you free from the lies you believe. So the signs that follow makes a little sense. Cast out devils. So what about those serpents, right? Serpents. You see a lot of those people dancing around with rattlers. They have whole rattler churches. Serpent, vipers, all that thing. How many people have died because they take that scripture completely literally and then they get bit at services and then boom, they're done a lot. But the serpents that you can take up, and that word take up doesn't mean to be lift up. It means actually to cause to cease. Isn't that interesting? That's what the word means. The word I a hero, a hero in Greek, it means to take up, to remove, to take upon oneself, to take away, to appropriate what's been taken, to make right with those serpents. And what are the serpents? Well, Jesus called them a generation of vipers. Serpents are all over scripture. They're all, they're, uh, you know, not a great thing. Sometimes classified as religious people. Yeah, like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, you generation of serpents, you generation of vipers, Jesus said. In Matthew 23, I think 33, uh, Paul talked about these serpents. Paul, in Acts 28, he was, he came to a bunch of people and he was sharing the truth. And as he was throwing sticks on the fire, they say that a serpent came out, grabbed onto his hand, latched on tight. And you know what he did? He like shook it off. He, like just shook it off. Like it was nothing and everybody saw the power of God. But was it a literal serpent that bit him? Could have been. Maybe it wasn't venomous. Who knows? Maybe it was. Maybe he does have superhuman powers. Or could it be that he came to a bunch of people, they call it a barbarous people, who showed no kindness and he started talking about the, uh, the things of God and then a couple of religious people came up, started smacking him down, saying, Don't you, don't you sell a Uranus as a planet mug? As merchandise? Aren't you on here just for the money? I see you selling that buckle up shirt. How do I know that you're really here to do the things of God? Well, I'll tell you how. Because I'm here, doing it. I've been doing it since 2008. Been doing it a long time. And I'm grateful for those people that do support the channel. I appreciate those people that do it because it helps in a huge way. But I'm going to shake that nonsense off. I'm going to shake it off. Right? Because I know the truth of my heart and you should know the truth of yours. You know, the irony is in that scripture, that passage where it first talks about a viper, a serpent, it then calls it a beast, a venomous beast. In scripture, we find out that venom has a lot to do with lies, poisoning words, condemnation, slander. I get that a lot, but I always take it as an opportunity to try to encourage people, to show them my heart, because perhaps I can lead somebody to the Lord. I don't know. Only if God draws them, though, because see, that's the thing. It's not me that does these things, Jesus said. I can't do anything of myself, Jesus said. So you're looking at me, you're thinking, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but he says it's the Lord doing everything. Anything that's been in my life that has been wonderful and hard, it's the Lord. Anything in your life, wonderful, hard, it's the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's the Lord that says, when the serpents come for you, when those vipers come for you, when those liars come at you, just shake it off. It's that easy. Can't hurt you. These are the signs that follow those who believe. Right? You go to people that are possessed by lies, people that are struggling in their life, people that are hurting. You share the truth of God and the truth of God. The brightness of its coming delivers the person from the lie. That's the thing, right? That antichrist sitting in the, the uh, temple of God, declaring itself to be God, those negative thoughts that are in your head, the lying powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness that we wrestle with on a daily basis, not flesh and blood, those lies that are in your head, come by with the truth, you share the truth, and the truth cast it out. Puts a person back, as scripture says, in their right mind. Signs that follow believers of people, you start sharing the truth of God and the serpent comes up, tries to bite you in the hiney. Guess what you do? You shake your tushy. You shake them off. Because in the grand scheme of things, these are the signs that follow believers. And guess what else? If you drink any deadly thing, any deadly poison, it's not going to hurt you. Now, what does that mean? Well, the word to drink, let me pull this up, pino, I think that's in the, that's what it, in Greek, pino. Yeah, it reminds me of like a little tiny little pino grigio, hey. A little bit of little pino, hey, Dan Dan, come on over, have some pino. The, to, to drink, maybe that's where we get pino from, that word. But it figuratively means 
to receive into your soul. So we're not really talking about literally drinking either. If you go to the word origin, that's the thing. You know, I use studylight.org for those people that want to know. It's very simple. It's like a search engine. So it's not about drinking any poison. And there are people that take little small amounts of arsenic. That's not bright. I mean, it's just... But once again, if you're possessed by a lie, you know, you, you, the father of all lies will get you to do things that's going to harm you. Get you to do things to make it look like the power of God's not really active in the world, right? If you, you get bit by a rattler and say the Lord is working with you and you die, people may question if the Lord really is here. That's why we let the Lord teach people what these things mean. We don't try to teach. I mean, we share to the best of our ability, but only God's going to reveal these things to you. When Christ comes, not everybody recognizes it. A lot of people don't believe today. Let me, let me read to you about this uh, drinking and the deadly thing, Pino, to receive into your soul. So in other words, people say a bunch of things to you, right? And they condemn somebody, or they try to manipulate you, or try to get into your head, or they try to control you, and you, it, it, you receive it into your soul. Well, guess what? If you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking the kingdom of God, it's not going to hurt you. Because you're going to be like, yeah, it may, may make you sad that people are saying things that they're saying. It may hurt your feelings a little bit. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. Listen to what Romans 3 says so you know that I'm telling the truth. So you know that this poison ain't arsenic. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Their tongues, they've used deceit. See? Lies. The poison of asps under their tongues. Poison. People that are lying. People that are deceitful. You drink it up. Store, you receive it into your soul, just like that serpent, right? You can shake it off, just like casting out that devil. These are the signs that follow those that believe. Now, look, I used to work in uh, Christian TV. That's right, I was like the head writer. Big, big, big television network, right? I, I, I do I do miss a lot of my friends that, that were there. But, you know, I got to see all this stuff firsthand. You know, and a lot of the things that they do there, it's, it's the laying on of hands. I, I can't tell you, I, because I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and ankylosing spondylitis, and I was in and out of the hospital, and I suffered a lot. I can't tell you how many times, how, how wonderful it was, the uh, the owner of the network calling me down and saying, Jacob, come on down here, and then having this miracle prophetic teacher or this, you know, the, the pastor who is a healer or this anointed individual laying their hands on me, pushing on my belly. Somebody once, when my uh, my, my nanny, who I love dearly, was uh, passing away, I had to go to New York to say goodbye to her. She was like my, you know, like my mother. I, uh, I lived with her until I was like six. She meant everything to me. Gave me a little, you know, bring this, to, you know, this 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 uh, towel, bring it and lay it on her, and you know, it'll heal her. I remember that. And I actually, really, you know, back then, I was like, eh, why not? Give it a try. <laughs> I give it. A, I gave it a try. She still passed away. But then I had a beautiful dream about her. Because, you know, nothing is ever lost. It isn't one day found. And in the dream, she was sitting in the uh, the passenger seat of a car. And it was a beautiful day. And she had this long, flowy hair. And I was in the back. She turned to me and she said, Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. It's a great line from um, a beautiful psalm. One of my favorites. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But anyway, so the last part, laying hands. I had a lot of them, right? They always give, oh, boop, 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 always hitting me. Oh, we're going to heal you. We're going to heal you. And that was another thing, too, the falling out in the spirit and all that. And I know a lot of you watching, you probably have fallen out in the spirit. You've probably seen people laying on hands. And, and I'm not saying that this stuff doesn't literally happen. Okay? I'm not saying that this isn't also a magnificent sign. I would love to walk over to somebody who uh, can't walk and just my, lay my hand on them and say, Lord, heal them. But I do know that God does heal. I do know that God does set free. But not the way we've been taught. That's the thing. Even that word hand, it's not what you think. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In Greek, the word for hand is kyre. And it literally means the helper agency of anyone by, it's like helping somebody. It's like, hey, could you, could you give me a hand with that? Could you help me out with that? It also is very symbolic of God's might. And this is a sign that follows believers. When you see people in need, you help them out. It's not about coming over. I mean, think about that for a second. Think about that for a second, okay? What's more godly? What's more godly? Seeing somebody having trouble, you know, bringing the uh, garbage to the curb and running over and helping them bring garbage over to the curb or going to a complete stranger and going, oh, Lord, heal this man. Now, I, I think that that's wonderful, too. I'm not saying it isn't. But what's more godly? What is, what is a, a sign that follows those who the spirit of the living God has appeared itself to? 
Christ in you makes itself known. What are the signs that follow? Loving others. See someone who's infirm? That word sick, by the way, it literally just means weak. Somebody who needs strength. These are the signs that follow. And so you've been told in your churches, in your religions, you've been told that, you know, you get bit by a snake, you could drink poison, and you come over and you just, you know, cast out people that are demon-possessed. And yet, there's the truth right there. Now here's the wonderful thing because this is what follows next. So after, after the Lord appeared, after the Lord made known the signs that are supposed to follow believers, after he does all this, he's received up into heaven, sits at the right hand of God, which is in the temple of God, in the kingdom of God. And where's the temple, right? Point to your temples. Where's the kingdom of God within you? The right hand establishing himself establishing the kingdom of God within those that God appeared to, that Christ appeared to. And they went forth and they preached everywhere, the Lord working in them, working with them, and confirming the word with the signs that followed. So, I think it's time to show these signs to the world. Don't let anybody bother you. Shake it off when those serpents come. Help people to see the truth, to, to learn the truth no matter what the cost. Please tell people how loved they are, how appreciated they are. Please lay hands on the sick. Go around and help people that are hurting and in need. And please don't forget to share and subscribe, like it, and check the bell for notifications. I love each and every one of you. I hope that this uh, encouraged you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.